everybody Kwame here and as you saw from the little opening video there and the title we saw we had an incredible encounter with a coyote this weekend and I got my probably my best picture I've ever taken so far so to in this video I'm going to show you the you know we'll go through the picture itself uh, we're going to talk about some of the settings and like just some things I would change after seeing the way I shot this picture and then also some of the changes that I've made uh, because of this picture all right so this is the finished image um, of that coyote as it was running or bounding through the air really cool and as you can see I was panning on taking in this picture and I am so impressed that the Sony a6100 um, captured this so actually, actually I should say I shot this on the Sony a6100 and we will look at the uh, my camera settings for shutter speed and all that in a second but you can see I have it on I had it on a uh, animal eye detect but I was able to capture onto the coyote's head and keep that sharp while keeping everything else um, you know out of focus really I was really quite impressed so let's look at the raw image here so this is the raw image and this is what it looked like straight out of the camera and I even um, I cropped it down quite a bit so this is what it looked like right before the crop and then this is what it looked like straight out of camera now straight out of camera we're looking at um, I was at ISO 200 at 108 millimeters in my lens f5.6 I think that's the lowest at that 28 to 200 so I was shooting this sorry I should say I was shooting this on the a6100 using the 28 to 200 and I was at f5.6 uh, at 1 two hundredths of a second now I shoot everything in aperture priority, so this is the lowest uh, at this at this uh, focal length that this uh, I could get at f 5.6. But even you know then you can see it captured this uh, coyote and got it pretty well in focus. Like I'm pretty impressed that as I was panning and taking pictures with a camera that doesn't have uh, image stabilization, a lens that doesn't have image stab stabilization, I was able to get this picture. Now, as far as what I did to the picture for edit, editing it, uh, let's just go down the line here. I I did not do auto on this one because I knew it wouldn't get it right. So I kept the exposure the same because, as you saw, the uh, coyote was overexposed. So I had to rain you know, get back some of this um, exposure here. So I didn't turn bring down the exposure on here, boosted up the contrast a little bit, but toned down the highlights, which brought back some of the detail like the jawline here in the uh, coyote I didn't mess with the shadows because again if you open up the shadows it's just gonna open up back here there's nothing on the coyote that I needed to open up or you'd open up some uh, shadows down here which again I didn't want to do uh, brought out the whites just a little bit just to um, raise the overall exposure of the picture without raising the exposure I don't know how to explain it but it, it worked a little bit and then brought down the blacks, blacks just a little bit because I didn't want this, to I didn't want his nose totally black. As for color, I brought down the, um, the temperature just a little bit because it wasn't, you know, it was a nice day. It was like 55 to 57 degrees, but it wasn't like warm or anything. It was, it's winter. So I wanted to make sure I brought down the temperature a bit. Uh, pumped up the vibrance just a little bit because I wanted to bring out some of these oranges in this um, in this dead thicket right here and then I didn't touch the saturation uh, we look at effects I did pump up the bring up the dehaze just a, a touch to 20 I didn't um, I actually brought down the sharp sharpening so I took out all the sharpening and we'll talk about that here in a second turned on image uh, lens correction and then to straighten out my horizon, I use the rotate tool under the uh, geometry tab here. So that is how I got it to this. So from here, I actually brought it into uh, Topaz um, Sharpen AI. So we'll go here. Only thing that I wanted sharpened was this area of the coyote. That's it, just the head. You know, so you could bring out some more detail in the fur, bring out a little bit more color in here, and really just make it more definitive. And it did a fantastic job. Now, this is not the first time I had to do this. I actually did it earlier, 
and I just did a global um, you can see I messed up on the on the color here but I did a global sharpening and you can see down here like over here it just really messed up this image so with Topaz Sharpen AI you kind of have to you know if you don't want it to to sharpen the whole picture you do have to go in and use their masking option and just paint in where you want to sharpen or else it can actually ruin the picture so then from here after I sharpen the picture I opened it up in Topaz um, Gigapixel AI now this is just going to enhance the, the picture and I just did a two-time um, enlargement and it also does some um, you can do some sharpening I didn't want any of that but the great part about using Topaz Gigapixel uh, is it retains a lot of the detail so it doesn't look really bad at all and I did that because I'm on a APS-C sensor but I know that I want to print this on a canvas print pretty large so it doesn't have to be razor sharp but I, I don't want to lose a lot of the detail when I print this and so you can see here it did a great job you can see the individual hairs well you know sort of in here but it, it looks really good and it looks just like the um, sharpen AI picture except for it has it's you know you can zoom in a little bit more now I did edit this picture and the only thing I did was I added a couple of um, gradient filters now I could have done this at any point and the only thing I did on these gradient filters as you can see here was on this top one I brought down the clarity just to help separate the coyote from the background a little bit and I brought down the exposure back here just a touch and then down here on this one I brought down the blacks so I wanted a little bit more contrast in these darker areas and also brought down the exposure and then uh, warm this part up so this part I wanted a little bit warmer again to bring out the uh, oranges and some of those reds a little bit but not overdo it and I think it looked it looks really good so after doing all that this is the final image and I'm really happy with this image this uh, turned out great and it was you know this is a bucket list type of image for me now it's not everyone's gonna love it and that's fine but I really really am happy with this image and I got a couple other pictures uh, from this from this uh, coyote this one here you can see the a6100 caught it in midair now I did open this up in uh, Topaz Sharpen and Topaz Gigapixel AI but I was able to get it in full Superman mode it was really cool and this is like this is a great picture but for me this one here I don't know why it just really I, I really love the sense of motion I love how you can see that it's getting ready to uh, take off and you know really bound uh, in the air it's it was just an, a magical magical moment and I'm very happy that I got this opportunity to take this picture I'm even more happy I was out with my uh, wife and son and you know they saw this with me it was truly a magical moment we were really excited and, and really pumped up about uh, about seeing this coyote because of this picture and because of how well the a6100 can perform I've decided to pick up the Sony 70 to 350 now I've been on the fence with the Sigma 100 to 400 or the Tamron 70 to 300 and they're both full frame cameras but what I realized is I'm going to be using the a6100 mainly for wildlife pictures right and so I want the most reach that I can get that has like image stabilization and everything like that the Sony 100 to 400 has that but it is so much more money that I want to spend and I don't need I don't need a, a big lens like that I don't even want a big lens like that the 70 to 300 the Sony 70 to 300 is great because it's still a small lens but it also has image stabilization and for the a6100 in particular because it doesn't have a sensor stabilization I think it's a must uh, for this camera if you're trying to do the type of work that I'm gonna be using it for like wildlife photography the one question you may be asking is am I gonna get rid of the a7 II? Absolutely not. I'm still going to use that camera. It is an amazing camera, but it's going to be more for landscape pictures. You know, it's that 28 to 200 is perfect for that 
um, for that camera and so I can get nice landscape pictures I can punch in and isolate a subject if I want to uh, you know like a flower or something like that I will also have the Samyang 24 millimeter lens so if I need something wider I have that lens and possibly you know down the road next year sometime I'd pick up a a wider angle lens like a uh, I don't know. They, uh, Tamron has their 17 to 28. Maybe I picked that up, and that would be a nice, you know, from 17 to 200, have a nice uh, kit there. But for right now, the A6100 is going to be the wildlife photography camera with the 70 to 300, and then having the um, the full frame camera with the 20 with the 28 to 200. I'm going to have a really good balance there because. On a full frame camera, that 70 to 350 is um, like 105 to 525 or something like that. It's, you know, that's a giant range. So, really, I'm going to have from 28 to the equivalent of over 500 millimeters. For me, that's going to be a perfect two camera setup, you know, especially going out because you don't know what you're going to get. So, there are days where I will, you know, most days I take one. Uh, camera if we're just out hiking and stuff but if I'm going if I know I'm going out to take pictures I'm always gonna bring the two cameras have them on peak design um, straps and how I can walk around take pictures uh, you know of wildlife if it's close if it's far you know landscape pictures however I want I, I'm gonna be covered so I'm really excited about this thank you guys as always for watching this video I really do appreciate it the support you guys uh, have shown me over this year is really amazing I still have more videos coming out this month so don't worry again I'll have videos on Wednesday and Friday I will have one this Friday I didn't have one last Friday because it was for gifts over $500 and I just thought that was ridiculous I didn't want to put something up like that so I will have a new video uh, Wednesday and Friday and then look forward to 2021 which is just around the corner uh, I have some really cool video ideas planned for that. Um, you know, if you want to support this channel, you know, hitting the like and subscribe button really does help. Also, I have Amazon links down below to everything I've talked about. But if you are shopping this holiday season, if you click on that link, whatever you buy, I get a small commission. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but it really does help me be able to get uh, some of the gear that I can get for this channel uh, to show off to you guys and all that good stuff. Thank you again for watching this. I will see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.